Hello everyone, welcome to Come Sit at My Table. We're Tom and Melissa, and we're happy you're here for our video today. This is video number five in our series, Super Bowl Sundays. We spell super, S-O-U-P-E-R, because we're doing a six week long series of soup videos that is leading us up to Super Bowl Sunday on February 11th. Today is number five, and we're making creamy chicken gnocchi soup. Now, if you've ever had creamy chicken gnocchi soup at a restaurant called Olive Garden, <laughs> you know how delicious this soup is. I cannot tell you that this is their recipe because I don't have their recipe, but I think it's pretty close, and it's absolutely delicious. Now, I told you this is video number five in our series. If you want to see the other videos, the other soup recipes that we've already put on, of course you can just scroll back through our recipes and look for them, or you can click on Come Sit at My Table, click on the name of our channel, it will take you to our homepage, and at the top of that page, you can look across and there are tabs. The first one says Home, the next one says videos, the next one says shorts. The fourth one over says playlist. If you'll click on the word playlist, it will take you to a screen that has all the different playlists that Melissa has set up with our videos. One of those playlists is called Super Bowl Sundays. And that has all the videos and recipes for all the soup recipes we have put on for this series. Now, you might be saying, well, where do I get the recipes? Every video we do has the written recipe in the description box right below the video. So if you're watching the video, go right below it where you see the title of the dish we're making. Click on that title. That box will expand. And Melissa always puts the written recipe there for you. And our contact information is at the bottom of that box. Okay, we've taken care of all that. Let's start making soup. Let's talk about what we're going to use to make creamy chicken gnocchi soup. We're going to start with five tablespoons of butter. Now, I've already melted our butter in our Dutch oven, and you can use a Dutch oven or you can use a large stock pot, just as long as it's big enough to hold your soup. It doesn't matter, you don't have to have a Dutch oven. But we're gonna start with five tablespoons of butter. To that, we're going to add one large onion that has been finely diced. And you want it to be fine because you don't want huge chunks of onion in your soup. We also have finely diced, and I'll just pick some of these up and show you how small they are. We have finely diced three ribs of celery and three medium carrots. And those are diced all about the same size. The onions, the carrots, and the celery are pretty much the same size. That way they cook at the same time. Now, we are going to put those three in the butter, and we will let those saute. We'll let them cook for a little bit until the onion and celery has gotten soft. The carrots probably will not get soft while we're sauteing. They take a little longer, but they will cook in the soup. We just wanna saute it until the onions become translucent and they and the celery become soft. After we've sauteed those three, we will add in five cloves of minced garlic. Now, if you've watched our videos, you know I don't like mincing garlic. So I buy a jar of garlic that's already minced. It is real garlic. It is just pre-minced and packed in juice in the jar so you don't have to mince it. If you want to use fresh garlic, then you sure can mince up your own, and that would be delicious. How many would you need? But I'm not doing that. Five cloves of garlic, or if you're doing the already minced, that would be five teaspoons. Now, we're going to put that in and cook it for a minute, and then we will add five tablespoons of flour, and I'm just using all-purpose flour, but you can use self-rising if that's what you have, but five tablespoons. We're also using three cups of heavy cream. Now, I know what you're saying. You've only got two cups in there. You're right, I do, because that's the measuring cup I have. So I'm gonna use that, and I'm going to add one more. 
and I am using heavy cream, but half and half is fine. You can use either one. They work equally well. Then we will add at least six cups of chicken broth. Now, I do have some extra here. I have an extra box sitting back here just in case I need it. But we're going to start with six cups and see how it is. If it's a little too thick or I feel like we need some more broth in it, we can add a little more. Probably wouldn't go over eight cups. So six to eight. Start with six and then you can determine whether you think you need a little more or not. The next ingredient is thyme. I tried to find fresh thyme to use and I could not find any at the grocery store we went to. They did have a section for um, herbs and things, but there was no thyme there. Then I went to the spice aisle and I tried to find dried thyme leaves. No luck with that either. So I ended up with ground thyme. I'm going to use one teaspoon of that. If you're using thyme leaves, dried leaves, or you're using fresh thyme, I would suggest you use about three teaspoons of that. But of course, you can adjust it the way you like it. So whatever you prefer, you do that. The next ingredient is our diced chicken. And you need about four cups of diced chicken that's already been cooked and that you have cut up. Now, if you know that that's a four cup measuring cup, you know I've got more than four cups in there. That's because I had rotisserie chicken. Actually, I had two small rotisserie chickens and they were small. But I just took the breast off of those and chopped them. And that's what I ended up with. I certainly wasn't gonna waste the rest of it. So I'm putting in a little more than four cups, but four cups will be sufficient if that's what you have. If you have a little more, throw it in. It's not gonna hurt, right? Our next ingredient is gnocchi. Now, gnocchi is made with potatoes, but if you didn't know what it was, you would swear it was pasta. And we need 24 ounces. All I could find were 16 ounce packages. So I'm going to use all of one package and half of the other. We'll save the other half of the package and we'll boil it and put some pasta sauce on it and eat it one night. So 24 ounces of gnocchi. Then you need about four cups of spinach leaves. Baby spinach works really well. If you can't find baby spinach, just get spinach leaves, remove the stems, and rough chop it. You don't want it chopped fine because when you put it in the soup, it's going to shrivel. It's going to wilt, and it's going to be smaller than what it is when you go in. So you don't want to chop it up real little or it'll just, it'll turn into nothing. Let's talk about this spinach. If you have huge spinach leaves like this one, you are going to want to remove that tough stem. You don't want that in your soup. And the way that I find is the easiest is just to bend it together and pull that leaf and that will come out. Then for a leaf this size, I would probably break it in half and maybe even half again. If you have a small leaf like this, you don't have to do anything. That can just go straight into your soup. If you have a small leaf like this that still has a stem on it, you can just pinch it off if you'd like and throw it away. You don't even have to do that. It's small enough, it's probably fine. So you decide, this is a small leaf, but look what a stem is on there. You don't want that stem in your soup. So again, I would just fold it, pull, take that stem out and put it in the soup. Okay, let's get started. Oh, salt and pepper. You're going to need about one teaspoon of salt and a half teaspoon of pepper. If you want to add a little less, if you're watching your salt intake, then add less. You don't have to add any, but if you want to add it, maybe a teaspoon. If you add in a teaspoon and you feel like it's not quite enough, you can sprinkle in a little more. That's up to you your choice on the salt and pepper. Okay, let's get our 
our vegetables started. I've already got the butter in the um, Dutch oven and it's melted. So I am going to throw in my onions and my celery. And let me grab the peppers. Oh, wait a minute. There's some onions hiding in here. I don't mean peppers, I mean carrots. <laughs> My goodness, what in the world? Okay, so in go the carrots. Glad you caught me on that. Well, we were talking about green peppers earlier. Yeah, we were talking about that usually you start something like this with either onion, celery, and carrots, or onion, celery, and green peppers. This one has carrots. So we want to just sweat those onions and that celery down a little bit. It's going to take, if you do it over medium to medium high heat, it's going to take probably seven to eight minutes, 10 minutes at the most. You don't want to cover it. You want the, the liquid to be able to um, evaporate. So just leave it uncovered. Make sure you stir it well to get all of those vegetables coated with that butter. That's why you put that butter in there. You want that flavor and you want those vegetables coated with it because the next thing we're going to do after we get this cooked is we're going to add the butter, the uh, flour. Well, we're gonna add garlic first for just a minute. Then we're gonna add flour and make a roux to kind of thicken our soup. So, this is gonna take about seven to eight minutes, maybe 10 at the most. And speaking of that, I am going to set my timer. Timer, seven minutes start. I know you don't want to stay here and listen to me ramble on and on for seven or eight minutes. So we will stop the video. We will let these cook, and then we'll come back and show you the next step. So we'll be back in just a few minutes. All right, our carrots, celery, and onion have cooked for exactly seven minutes. They look really good. The onion and celery have gotten pretty tender. They're, they're sweated down. You can see they're translucent. And so now we're going to add, we're going to add our garlic. One, two, three, get out of there, four, and five. Now, if you're not a garlic fan, then don't add that much. Just add one or two. If you are a garlic fanatic, then add more. This is your soup. Make it the way you like it. Now, we have to be very careful here because garlic burns very easily, and we do not want burned garlic. If it burns, we will not have a very good taste to our soup. Burnt garlic is not very tasty. So we have to really be careful. We have to watch it closely, not let it start to burn. You just want to, oh, I can smell it. When you can start smelling it, you know it's, it's pretty close to being cooked, and I can smell it. So, we're going to add our flour. We have five tablespoons of flour that we're going to just sprinkle over our vegetables. And that's to make our roux. Oops, sorry. I forget that the noise is a little irritating to people listening. I'm just used to hitting my spoon on the pot to get everything off. And... All right, now you can see that the flour is kind of just disappearing into the vegetables. You can see it's gotten really thick. Look at that. Can you see that? See how they're coated? And that's what you want. You want that flour now to cook. So I'm going to turn the heat up to, oh, a medium high because we want that flour to start cooking. If you don't cook that flour for one to two minutes at least, you're going to have a raw flour taste to your soup and that's not very appetizing either. So we're just going to cook that for a couple of minutes. I've actually got it up close to high because I want to cook that flour. Now, 
I will tell you that when Melissa and I go to Olive Garden, I don't guess I'll be in trouble for talking about Olive Garden, will I? Well, we're actually very complimentary of them. Absolutely. We, like soup. we love Olive Garden. Um, when we go to Olive Garden, most of the time, especially if it's at lunch, I get the all-you-can-eat soup and salad. And they will always say, which soup would you like? Well, they have two or three that you can choose from. I don't even know how many because I don't do that. I always just say, bring me the chicken gnocchi soup. It is my favorite. Between that and that delicious salad, and oh my goodness, those breadsticks. Mm, what a great meal. So that's what we're trying to recreate here today. We're just trying to recreate that really delicious soup at Olive Garden. If you've never had Olive Garden's chicken yolky soup, try this. Make this and see what you think. But then if you have an Olive Garden near you, go try it. Just go try theirs and, and see what you think about it and compare it to this recipe. And, you know, I hope you'll be really pleasantly surprised at how close this is to their recipe, to their dish. Okay, I think that has probably cooked enough. Now we're going to start adding our chicken broth and our cream. Let me re-emphasize that you can use heavy whipping cream or you can use half and half. Now you alternate these, right? Well, yeah, you're supposed to. So I'll put part of this in and I'll put in some of the milk. The cream. Uh, well, it is milk though. <laughs> yeah. I knew what you meant. I just want to clarify for somebody who's watching. Yeah. It is heavy cream. I'll just tell you that I really meant to get half and half. And it was my fault. I accidentally picked up heavy cream. But both will work. If you're going to the store to get it, eh, I'd probably recommend you get half and half. But either one will work. Heavy cream's just going to make it a little creamier. Okay, let's add the rest of our broth. I don't know why you would have to alternate, but that's what the original that. recipe said that we found somewhere. So, all right, you wanna stir that up really well. I love the colors of this soup. Let's add the other cup of heavy cream. Now, if we feel like we need more broth, I can always put more in. All right, so we need to bring this up to a boil. We're going to let it simmer. After we bring it to a boil, I'll lower the heat and, and let it simmer for about eight to 10 minutes or until it is slightly thickened. I don't think it will over thicken with just five tablespoons of flour, but if it does get a little too thick, we can add a little more chicken broth to it. So there's no reason for us to stay and let you watch this pot try to come to a boil, but you know what they say, a watched pot never boils, so we need to quit watching it, I guess. But we will bring this to a boil, lower the heat to a simmer, and let it simmer for eight to 10 minutes, and then we'll be back. You can see that our soup has thickened slightly. It's not thick by any means, but it has slightly thickened. Now we're going to do the next step. We are going to add one teaspoon of ground thyme, in fact, I'm probably not adding that whole teaspoon right now. I'm gonna start with half of a teaspoon and see what it tastes like after we get it stirred in. Might need another half, I may not. But we're gonna stir that in with the chicken. Okay. 
Okay, let's get all that out of there. And our potato gnocchi. Now, I do want this to be simmering or maybe even at a low boil because you have to have it cooking for the gnocchi. And the gnocchi will help thicken it just a little bit more. Not a ton, but it will thicken it some. So I'm just going to set that down there and make sure these are broken up when I put them in. You don't want to put them in in a clump. And I think the easiest way to break them up is to roll them in your hands. So I just take them, put them in my hands, kind of gently move them around, roll them, and they break up into individual pieces. Most of them will already be individually in there anyway, individually. That didn't make sense. Um, but you may have to... Not stuck together. You can, yeah, not mm -hmm. stuck together. You can see those are stuck. See how that's one big piece? So you just have to break those apart and put them in. Stir those in there. Oops, I'm missing two. Get in there, guys. Now we want about half of this other pack make 24 ounces i really really wish i could have found frozen gnocchi they are in my opinion they are just better or fresh if you've got a pasta market near you an italian market and they make fresh gnocchi oh my goodness lucky you okay that's about half of those so we're gonna stir those in. Now, this needs to cook for about five minutes. And I'm going to turn it back up so that it starts to simmer. You have to cook those gnocchi. Now, here's an interesting tidbit if you've never cooked gnocchi. If you're just cooking gnocchi in a pot of boiling water, they cook in two minutes. Isn't that wild that they cook so quickly? You know they're cooked when they float to the top. So you just put them in boiling water, wait for two to three minutes and skim them off the top of the water and they're ready to eat. You can stir them in um, with some pasta sauce, marinara sauce, whatever you like, and they're ready to go. We love gnocchi. All right, so this has to cook for about five minutes. So we're gonna just bring the temperature back up. I'm gonna turn my heat all the way up to high just to get it started. And I will stir because we certainly don't want anything to stick to the bottom. Even though this pan is really good about not sticking, I just wanna make sure. So I will stir it, maybe not constantly, but I will stir a lot. And after the gnocchi are cooked and done, and I probably will take one of those out and, and taste it just to make sure they're done, then we'll come back and put in our spinach and a little bit of salt and pepper, and our soup's ready to eat. We'll be back as soon as the gnocchi's ready. Our gnocchi has cooked for a few minutes, and I just tasted one, and it's really good. So, we're going to finish the soup by adding some salt and pepper and then our spinach, we'll let our spinach wilt and it'll be done. Now this is a big pot of soup. So I'm adding one teaspoon of salt. It might need more than that, but we're gonna start with a teaspoon. I'm hoping it won't need any more. And if you don't want to use that much, you don't have to. I did switch. I know earlier in the video we showed black pepper, but I'm switching to the white pepper because it dawned on me that this is a white soup and I don't want those black specks of pepper in the soup. So I'm switching to the white pepper. That's up to you though. Black pepper is fine, it won't hurt a thing. Okay, now that we have the salt and pepper stirred in, we're going to add our spinach and it's going to look like a lot but it wilts to almost nothing. So four cups of coarsely chopped spinach with the stems removed. 
we'll just stir that in and that will wilt in the heat. I hope I didn't overdo it with the spinach because we don't want spinach soup. But four cups is what I've put in it before and I just have to be careful because I tend to pack each cup. I tend to pack it in there and then it's already like I might have too much, but yeah, it looks really good, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. It's so creamy and smooth and oh, it's just delicious. But we have to wait for that spinach to wilt in there. But it will do that fast. While we're waiting on that spinach to wilt, let me remind you that we sure would appreciate it if you'd go right below this video and click the thumbs up. That just says you liked our video. The more people that do that, the more times YouTube will share it. Also, over on this side, if you've never done it before, we would appreciate you clicking that subscribe button. You only have to do that once. That subscribes you to our channel. We like to say that gives you a permanent seat at our table. Right beside of that subscribe button is a little bell. It looks like a little dinner bell if you'll click it in the word all. YouTube will notify you every time we add a new video so you'll never miss one. Also, we would appreciate you sharing our video. Share it with your friends and family so they can know about our channel and they can see our videos too. Also, let me remind you again, the recipe is right below this video where you see the title. Click the title or that box. It will expand and you will find the written recipe there. Melissa does that every time. Wow, look at this. And you can see that spinach has wilted very quickly. So, I'm going to have a bite. I'm just going to use the bowl the spinach was in. Doesn't that look good? It does look really good. It smells gonna, so good in here. I'm going to turn it off. Also, let me, let me just get a, I'm just going to take one bite out. Let me tell you that we are serving this tonight with breadsticks. That's it. You could put a salad with it if you want to, but you don't even need to do that. This has vegetables and meat and um, greens and everything in it that you really need for a meal. So you really don't need a salad. But if you want to put a salad with it, you could, but we're just going to do breadsticks and that will be plenty. This is a very filling soup. It, it really fills you up. Mainly because of the meat and the potato gnocchi. I don't want to burn my mouth. By the way, do you want a first bite? I think I'll wait too because it's really hard for me to sample soup. I know. But I appreciate you asking. She always you. says, it's hard to sample soup mm -hmm. when I'm holding the camera. So I knew that. I just wanted to ask. I know I say it a lot, but that is so good. <laughs> mm. That is just the perfect winter comfort food soup. You just can't beat that. I know I'm not Olive Garden, but I think that's really good. All right, we do appreciate you watching our video. Thank you for staying with us. Don't forget to go look at that playlist so you can see all of our soup videos for this series that we're doing. And we only have one more left. A week from today, we do our last soup video in the Super Bowl series. So make sure you come back for that next week. Thank you again for watching. Remember... You are always welcome to come sit at my table. Have a great day.